there are two approaches to retrofitting your house. What has sort of turned into the industry standard is a prescriptive design. A prescriptive design is something that came out of a committee. That means if you, if you just do this, this, and this, you know, regardless of any other factors, um, then no one is to blame when it fails. So what we do, uh, and the, the alternative to uh, prescriptive design is we calculate the loads. We want to calculate the shear force, the lateral force, at the top of the foundation. We've got long walls and we've got short walls. It doesn't matter. This house, imagine this is your, this is your house, okay, and it sits on top of this floor diaphragm. Uh, floor diaphragm is what we talked about, this, this walking surface. It's composed of the rim joists, the joists, the subfloor. It's a rigid structural diaphragm. Your house sits on top of that, and wherever your house wants to go, it is taking that floor diaphragm with it. That means that if it goes, you know, if you have, and we calculate this house, this uh, mythical house to be about 80,000 pounds in weight. We've got 80,000 pounds going in any direction. So that means if it goes in this direction, we need to have X amount of resistance. If it goes that direction, we also need X amount of resistance. So the amount of hardware you need to stall on each wall <laughs> is equal. Now, if you had a house that, you know, I use a, you know, kind of a ridiculous example. If you have a house that is 10 feet wide and 100 feet long, you will need just as much hardware on those 10 foot walls as you need on those 100 foot walls because it moves as one unit. The house we just looked at, it's uh, 800 square feet. No, it's got, excuse me, it's 1,000 feet on each floor. So each floor weighs about 30 pounds a square foot. The roof weighs about 20 pounds a square foot. Now the second floor isn't as large as the first floor. You need to allow, uh, account for the roof load. Uh, uh, so let's say we've got 1,000 and 1,000 feet. So we've got 1,000 square feet of roof, 1,000 square feet of main floor. So we come up with a total weight and we multiply it by 0.25. So we've got 0.25 times 80,000 pounds, and we've got 20,000 pounds. We end up with eight of these uh, on each wall. And there are more connectors, but uh, you know we'll get into that later. If we did prescriptive design, we would end up with, um, I believe, seven on these walls, and I think 11 on the long walls. So all we're really doing is we're redistributing the hardware. We're taking some off the long walls and putting them on the short walls. Does that more or less make sense? This lateral resistance balances with this lateral resistance. And the shear wall, we have a third issue we need to deal with, which is um, the plywood. Everything has to bounce, so it doesn't do you any good to put in more of these, but the same number of these, for example, or more of these, or stronger versions of these. You know, I see, uh, you know, I had somebody, they wanted me to use a, another contractor, wanted, uh, wanted to install a really strong version of this, and they're impressed by that, and they, they liked everything that we were going to do, but they want us to use those here, which, and I tried to talk them out of it, it made no sense, because, you know, it's sort of like you have a bicycle chain, and, and one of those, yeah, one of those links is titanium, it doesn't make the chain any stronger. So, um, but me, I'm not sure exactly where, what you were asking, if that answers your question, but I can tell you that in this arrangement, uh, at least with this plate, I know that the plate itself will deform before these pull out or these pull out, or the silt plate fails. So um, one question I get asked is, can you do this on the outside? Uh, you can, the hardware, let's go to the next slide, it might be two slides from here. The generic term for this is a side plate. Uh, so this is a, a flat version of the side plate. It weighs probably five times what this weighs. It's not as strong. Something about the, the, these curves and bends give it some strength. So we can do it on the outside. The problems with that are um, it's not as strong, so we have to use more of them. So instead of dividing uh, 1,340 pounds into 20,000, we're dividing 950 pounds into 20,000. Um, the second is because it's outside and the elements exposed, we 
had, we sent them out to have it hot dip galvanized. Now it comes from the factory with an electroplate galvanizing, which we have no faith in. So we buy a hundred of these at a time, and we take them to uh, Portland Bolt, and we have them hot dip galvanized along with the fasteners. We have these cut and then hot dip galvanized because we can't install a mechanical fastener that has a galvanized finish on it, it will chip off. Go ahead. There's two things. Uh, the Richter scale is really less significant than the ground acceleration. That's a totally different set of values. That and that's that 0.25. I should go back to that briefly since you brought that up. So that 0.25 number we used earlier, that's a ground force acceleration rate. And, you know, we think of that in layman terms, earthquake force. So you ask an engineer to calculate the loads like we did on your house. They wouldn't use 0.25. It depends on the zip code. It's, it's broken up by zip code. The, the, I think for this area it might be 0.14, 14% um, of the force of gravity. Um, so we're, you know, the number we use is almost twice that. Now, the engineer is designing to allow you to get out of your house after a moderate earthquake, which I guarantee you no one ever calls me for. Um, we're trying to save your house. 